Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you that tuned in to my event live. I also realized that the recording was really, really bad yesterday. So I just wanted to give you guys a couple of clips of what went on yesterday. Hope you enjoy. Be blessed. Ten years old, I was writing street library. And I ain't talking about with my mama, that my mama would be known to hustle or do whatever she wanted to do. But I would stay at home and open the door for her customers, and I would write hundreds and hundreds of dollars of street lottery. I knew how to calculate money real well. That's why I count it so good now. Never had a job at a bank. But I can count better than any bank teller you ever met. So I began to write street lottery at the age of 10 years old. 11 years old, still writing street lottery. All my mama had to do was tell me, here go the paper right here. See, back in the day, the street lottery, you used to have to write with carbon paper. You remember that, mama? You, you, you shaking your head, you know something about street lottery. You had to have carbon paper so that whatever you was writing, you had to send that to the number runner and then you would keep your copy in case somebody hit. You would know that they had hit. So I would write street lottery where my mama was gone. I would handle my brothers and sisters like I was 40 years old when I was only 10 and 11 years old, but I knew how to run a house like a grown woman. Fast forwarding it a little bit too. Well, let me, let me stop before I go to 13. When I used to ride the bus, and, and I hope my boss buddy is on tonight. I know she's at work in the hospital. But I went to school, and one thing about me, I was going to make my money. And fill your bag. I tell my boss buddies that every time. The only difference is now I'm feeling it a different way. Come on. So I would get on the school bus. And back then we would sell candy. But my mama wasn't buying candy. We would buy Kool-Aid. I don't know if y'all know anything about that. Yeah, yeah. But we would buy Kool-Aid and sugar and we would mix it together. Y'all don't know nothing. Y'all fooling me. So I would get packs and packs of Kool-Aid. Around then it was probably like 10 packs for a dollar. I would get the Kool-Aid and I would mix it with the sugar and I would put it in Ziploc bags and I would get on the school bus and I would hustle like a grown woman. But I was determined to get my money, honey. Yeah. Shopsburg then in a little community called Pine Grove Apartments. Some of y'all may know something about it if you yes, pass through yes, from time sir. to time. So about this time, we were moving on up a little bit and we moved to Rocky Mountain. I was 13 years old. And by then, the numbers wasn't enough. So my mama introduced me. And don't nobody judge my mama now because if you judge my mama, you gonna have to deal with me. Y'all too quiet for a miracle like that for me. Because see, why you celebrate me, God will allow you to get a house for you. Y'all ain't ready. November of last year, we walked in this building thinking we were coming here to rent. Because the building that we were in in Greenville, the water wasn't operating right in the kitchen. So we were coming here to do what we thought was a rental. 
And when I got here, the pastor was like, y'all come on and sit down in your pulpits. And when we came in here, it was pews everywhere, real, real Baptist. And I'm not against Baptists, but that's just not me. Um, so pews were everywhere. There was, you know, pews was all up there. He said, come on and sit in your pulpit. This your church. And I was like, okay, it looked real nice in here and everything. But you know, it, it's not my style. So we went and sat up there on the pulpit. I was like, okay, waiting for him to talk some numbers and figures. Do I got to fill out an application? What I got to do? So he started taking us. Let me take y'all outside and show you how many acres it is. Let me show you this and the land. He's telling me all this. The land extends back that way and it extends that way. And I'm like, sir, I'm just coming to rent the building. I don't need to know how many acres and all that. They'll, these are your acres. Right. So we sat down and he threw out this number, and I'm like, what? It wasn't a big number, but it wasn't a rental number. Right. And so I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I said, sir, I said, so what are you saying this building is for sale? He said, yeah, this building is for sale. I said, well, no, sir. In your listing, it has that this building is for rent. He said, well, my uh, daughter-in-law, or somebody I think it was the daughter-in-law, had made a mistake. <laughs> but how many know that mistakes don't be mistakes? Because see, God knew, like you were looking in the hood, but God said, uh-uh, I ain't taking you to the hood. I ain't taking you to the pit. I'm taking you to the palace. So I was just coming over here to rent another building. We was in Greenville, like a fool paying $2,000 a month every month for two and a half years. Y'all do the math. How much money we gave these people for two and a half years. Never again. So the man said, yeah, my daughter-in-law made a mistake. He said, but don't you worry about that. He said, God don't want you renting no way. I said, sir, I, you know, I understand that. I'm a woman of faith. They called me the queen of faith. I believe all of that. But I came here to rent. Because, see, I had plans. Me and my husband had been going around looking at property.